Like that is inexcusable. There's no excuse for that. Wing of the tail hits a kid in the head. Their skull is not fully formed. And we call them desk people. Just because you work for FWC. It's a derogatory term. Everybody. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the first episode in a very long time of 10 minutes with TikTok. This is TikTok the Ball Python. I'm Gabby. This is Chris and this is a little mini series that we do with TikTok the Ball Python and we just talk about basically whatever is viral that week, whatever you guys are sending us, tagging us in and we have been tagged probably hundreds of times now on the viral New York alligator that was confiscated last week. So we're gonna be talking about that. So this whole situation is very sad and a little bit sensitive for everybody involved. It is not a fun situation for the alligator, for the owner, um, or for us as people who have to uh, work with alligators and try to respond to things like this. It's just, it's just not a fun situation, guys. Yeah, so we're gonna try to approach this just with facts. Oh, there's my dramatic chihuahua. Just with facts in the, the most um, sensitive way possible. But it seems like every time we try, well, people get offended but it's, we're gonna try it's anyway it's a controversial situation you know i mean it is what it is so if you're not familiar with it um this guy uh in new york uh do you know what city um uh, i think it was hamburg new york which i've never heard of it's up by buffalo okay. i'm actually from new york but i'm from westchester so i'm not familiar with like the way northern states but I know that pretty much alligators are illegal in New York and there are ways to get like permits for education and things like that, which I believe is how he did it in the first place because he bought it um, 30 something years ago from Ohio at a reptile show when it was a baby. Yeah, okay, so he raised it. Um, he had it for a very long time, for many years, and then he even converted his basement to basically be a habitat for the alligator and built like a, a swimming pool in there for the gator and whatnot. And he had it legally uh, with the right permits for a while, but then the state changed the permits and he did not uh, keep up with the requirements. Yeah, so um, I know he was saying that he thought that he should be grandfathered, grandfathered in. The whole reason that this happened seems like a permitting issue because he was allowing the public to interact with this alligator. So. In the state of Florida, alligators are considered a class two animal. So there are regulations. So the public isn't supposed to have just free contact like that without the alligator being taped. Um, or size limit. Exactly. And so, or. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's specific caging requirements and wire gauging and, and just hours and documentation. And well, as Permits what? change as laws change. If you have an animal, you are responsible for keeping up with those laws and regulations. And that just, it is what it is. And that's what we had to deal with with the Casper tours that you were doing too. But that brings us to, I guess, the next point that we okay. want to talk about, which is annoying, but this is what happens when you want animals and permits. Um, the people making the laws don't necessarily understand anything about alligators. It's a bunch of like, we call them desk people. Just because you work for FWC. It's a derogatory term, you desk, desk people. people. <laughs> just because you work for Florida Fish and Wildlife, just because you know you work at a zoo, that doesn't mean that you know about animals. Um, there's like lawyers and just business people. And so yeah. I, I don't agree with uh, some things that they do. I, I do agree with some, but yeah. So I guess they were saying that it was a public endangerment, you know, because it's an alligator, which again makes sense. Now, do I think that this specific alligator, Albert, that we're talking about, is a public danger and is going to hurt anybody? No, because probably he not. Physically, we'll say, but, but choose our words not. here. Let's choose our words. Probably here. not. Probably not. Ninety-nine point nine percent no. But I think it's because not only he's been in captivity forever, he physically cannot open his mouth. He opens his mouth about that much and that's it. And that kind of brings well, us into our next topic of. Right, so metabolic bone disease. Yeah. So that's um, kind of the, 
I would say the crux of the entire argument here of why we are against this is because of the metabolic bone disease exhibited by this animal and by most crocodilians that are raised in captivity in settings like this and, and pet crocodilians and whatnot. Um, so this is like the real big rabbit hole we're gonna get into right here where we really take our stance very strongly about this subject. And so what is it? So MBD is what we commonly refer to it as. You'll see us talk about this. We've made a lot of posts about it, other videos about it and whatnot. So metabolic bone disease is a, um, a deficiency caused by a multitude of issues and can manifest itself in the animal in a multitude of ways. And it is poorly understood. If you notice, I'm using multitude in vague terms because we don't know. There's a lot to it. It's not a simple one plus one equals two kind of thing on this. So uh, it has to do with their diet, it has to do with their lighting, environmental factors, stress, frequency of eating. Um, there's a lot of things going into this and more things than I just listed that we don't understand. Especially when it comes to crocodilians because I feel like, I mean, I, there's definitely more knowledge when it comes to like tortoises and leopard geckos and bearded dragons and we see pretty severe cases in them too. But with alligators, it's truly not understood because even in Florida, if you have two wild caught nuisance alligators, healthy animals, they lay eggs, you hatch out the babies. Even if you raise the babies outside in a beautiful pool with the Florida sun, Natural giving them sunlight, a varied diet with whole prey, they still, they still get, get metabolic bone disease. Obviously there's varying degrees. Some of it is just so common. We're like, yeah, that's like a healthy that's animal. That's an acceptable amount. Exactly. That, you know? That's really what it is. But, but, but I can still see it. That's the thing yeah. too, is like when you put them side by side, I can tell you, that's a wild alligator, that's a captive alligator. And you can literally tell by how they look in their face. Yeah. And so that is something that like, again, it's pretty unavoidable for the most part in captivity to have a small amount of it. But then there are large amounts that um, you're like, dude, no, that's that this is negligence at this point, you know? It's like the pyramiding with our red foot tortoises when you see the little bit of pyramiding on their shell. Okay, lack of humidity. It's a healthy animal, a little bit of pyramiding. And then you see our sulcata tortoise, Theodore, who is pyramiding a giant hump and then his shell goes like this. And it's like, that is inexcusable. There is no excuse for that. And in this case with Albert, the alligator's jaw, like instead of lining up like this, it's like this. <laughs> like it, it's- And the top is like, I like- We'll add some pictures in. I've weird. never seen it that bad where the jaw like is literally like that. Like That's... the bottom jaw is just so short. Now, obviously we don't know the whole situation. We are piecing together info from different um, like interviews and articles, but it said that he would give him chicken. He would give him pork and like sometimes like cooked pork. And then he would give the, him like cheese cubes. Cheese cubes. Cheese cubes. Oh, cause in the wild alligators, you know, they, um, they milk cows and well, they get milk <laughs> and they make it into cheese. Well, it, that's the thing. Like when, when people have these alligators, it's, I feel like uh, they're not always thinking about what's best for the animal. And it's kind of just like a, a fad or, you know, like a gimmick. Cause he's also calling this an emotional support alligator, just like the other guy too. So right. Whenever so, someone calls an alligator, an like apex people, predator. Uh, well, people also feed him gimmicky foods, like giving him soda and Cheetos because it's, it's funny. Yeah. And it's they'll funny. eat it. I mean, it's an alligator, but when you're calling an apex predator, a, uh, Emotional, emotional support, support animal no. that is a red that's not flag. okay that's a red not flag. okay yeah so let's talk a little bit about his uh basement enclosure well first we say emotional support a couple times we did a whole video on emotional support alligators yes. so if you want to if you want to go down that rabbit hole you can check it out you're going to see a recap of a lot of the same things we're talking about in this video but um if you do want to do that one because people are going to be like oh well what about the emotional what about wally we, we have that. a whole video about his metabolic bone disease too so go check that out it's like 45 minutes long right but um well something i did want to say though about before we move on is with the the mbd stuff is that a lot of people are like oh but he's tame he doesn't bite and it's like he can't bite yeah. his mouth opens up this much mm -hmm. you can see it in videos we've seen this a lot with a lot of these captive alligators like there's the gator saw that we used to care for uh that um yeah, I've worked with her since 2012. When we first got her, we named her Saw because her face is so short and rounded instead of being elongated like an alligator normally should be. It's short, rounded, the teeth go out instead of down. So her face looks like a saw blade. It's round with teeth sticking out like this instead of this. And she can only open up her mouth this much. Yeah. I had to hand feed that alligator for years. And it was the only way you could keep it alive is you have to physically hand feed it because it can't pick up food on its own. 
um, which also means it can't bite you unless obviously you slip the finger in there on accident or something like that. But we get that a lot with a lot of these heavily MBD gators is they're like, oh, but it doesn't even bite. And it's like, cause it can't. I have a photo somewhere of a, an alligator yawning actually. And it's yawning, it's so wide. You can see like the open glottis and everything. I'll have to try to find it and add it in so you guys can understand how wide an alligator's mouth is supposed to open. They eat whole prey, turtles. they eat turtles. Yeah, they rip apart like deer. Their, their mouths are supposed to completely open. And um, I actually was tagged on the owner of this alligator's Instagram today and he has a video of this gator and it's literally can't open its mouth. So is that his fault? Yes and well, no. We're not there yet. We're not there okay. yet. Let's, let's try to branch this up. So like we're still... There's so much to cover. Yeah. So okay. let, let's try to let's, focus let's on organized. like... Let, yeah. To be organized, if we still say a couple more things about MBD and why that's so bad and whatnot, and then we can move from MBD to like ethics, right? And right. then also like enclosures and, and things like that can wrap in. But on the MBD side as well, you'll see with this alligator too, uh, its spine is malformed. So that's another one we'll see a lot. Um, its osteoderms are smooth. When you look at a wild alligator's osteoderms, it looks like a dragon. They're spikes. And uh, they actually, I just got cut the other day by a wild alligator's osteoderms. Yeah, they're like, so sharp. They're they so will sharp. cut you, they will bruise you. They're bone spikes on the back that are very strong. There is armor plating. And then when you see a wild alligator, completely smooth like you just mean a tiny captive little, alligator that's what i meant that's what i meant yeah so when you see a captive alligator you'll see like their osteoderms are just like rounded they're they're so smooth and rounded and then you see a wild one it's like a it's like a blade yeah. i mean that's a huge difference you know like i mean that's crazy it is so and i did an instagram story about this and uh people really liked it and i we should just like touch upon it again i did a whole story like a side-by-side -side comparison of, of captive alligator versus wild alligator and pointed out the differences and people were like wow you know i i was always wondering why all the gators in the zoos and all the gators in like the you know like the petting zoos and even like aquariums look so different than the wild alligators in florida and that's metabolic bone disease so there is something called well we call it i don't know if it's an official term the farm alligator face mm -hmm. and that is when the jaw structure is a lot thicker they have these big fat heads flat heads i think i coined that that we should we should trademark that well farm so gator face. it's from when i worked at the alligator farm yeah and we get a wild alligator in and i would be like oh no that you know that's a wild one you can see like he's got long jaws that one's got a farm face yeah because i was working at the farm mm, okay yeah i mean it is a farm alligator face so it's just Ugh, they're just not good looking alligators. <laughs> they're just really ugly looking alligators. And a lot of the time their teeth will stick out. So either the top, instead of, you know, alligators, it's supposed to be, well, it's not like a zipper. So you see the top row. So it's like this. And with farm gators, you'll, it's like that. Or on the bottom, instead of this, it's like that. It's very, very obvious. And again, we'll add some photos, but it, it's, the jaws don't line up. The teeth don't line up. The teeth are either too small way too sharp they don't have teeth it's it's just very obvious to uh to see all right so moving on from the whole mbd let's go into the ethics of this well so i guess this is a good time to talk about like his enclosure um i've seen a lot of really bad enclosures this guy put in some serious effort into this alligator enclosure he had a pool with running water you know he had like a little basking area for him like he definitely loved that animal. He definitely did his best. Yeah, he. I mean, you could tell he put a ton of money into it, you know? Yeah. Um, it's like, could he have done better? Of course, you know, like he could have done better, but he did a lot more than what most people do, you know? Um, most people just keep him like a bathtub or something. So or like, a tank. Yeah, so like he was definitely trying. That's why like we're not trying to bash this guy, you know? Um, it's not perfect, but like he did, you could tell he tried pretty hard to, to make that work, you know? But speaking you know ethically i don't think we should be keeping alligators as pets as private owners um well okay. it's more acceptable i think in florida because they're well, from florida we have like people have the space here but in northern states so what i was going to try to say is um to move into the legalities of this too is that each state has different laws some states have extremely lax wildlife laws where you can do whatever you want pennsylvania that's where a lot of alligators end up going people breed alligators in florida legally and then ship them up to pennsylvania to be sold as baby pets yeah. so like 
it depends. It varies state by state by state. Most states are smart and they just don't allow them as pets. I mean, these animals are not pets. Right. They should never be considered a pet, but people see the money, you know, so then they're gonna sell them as babies and who cares what happens? I made 50 bucks off selling a baby alligator. I'm happy, you know? And I will say most of the people that get alligators either release them or they die or we get it weekly where, hey, my life changed. I have this three foot alligator that I can't keep anymore. Can you take it in Florida? So the fact that this man has had the alligator for his 30 plus years, like kudos, that's, that's awesome. And we usually don't see that, but the alligator definitely has some serious health issues. Right. So, um, goodness. Well, so we already did that with the MBD. So the ethics part, you know, so he did legally have her for a while. The legalities changed. He didn't catch up they to the changes. They wanted him to do like a perimeter fence that was going to be like $18,000. I think they wanted him to stop doing like free contact with like kids and people. Um, but yeah, they wanted him to update it and he had time to update it. He didn't update it. Um, I don't obviously know. He said that he was trying to do like renew his permits and they weren't getting back to him. And that is the government. We have dealt with that many times. You got to stay on top of them. You got to get the paperwork yeah. done. I know it's a pain, but like that, it is what it is. So, um, yeah. And we are aware of of the snake and the chihuahua and keeping them separated. They, they you, well, you know there's going to be a million other. comments about this. They it's don't bother be so, each other. This python cannot eat the chihuahua. Okay. But you know that's going to be a million comments. <laughs> I know. How are you talking about ethics and you're feeding chihuahuas to pythons? It's not going to happen. This is my child. I would never. I don't even know if you could see her on camera right now, but she's on my lap. Well, I just know people are going to say that. You know? but, um, but, well, okay. So back to ethics though. So he was having kids swimming, yeah. free contact with an alligator that what was the who does he think he is chris gillette well i didn't only chris gillette's allowed to do that <laughs> so i don't agree with children being around alligators right. personally um that's something i have fought with a lot of other alligator professionals about i think that if you're an adult person and you're over 18 you can do whatever you want to do you want to put your life in danger do it i do it <laughs> but just know the consequences know that you are old enough to understand that um, but for children, anybody here under 18, um, not without parental consent, you know, when we do the Casper tours, you can be 16 with parental consent, right. um, and they're behind, you know, the safety barrier and everything like that. But, um, but yeah, for like kids, like, you know, seven year olds, do you think they have any concept of the danger they're in right there? Like that, that's not well, fair. He, this, this guy and a lot of people that have, you know, the emotional support alligators say he's puppy dog tame. He's so friendly. He's cuddly. He loves people. He would never hurt anybody. And again, this goes back to, because he can only open his mouth, you know, like this much, he probably can't bite anybody. Um, and he's so obese and has such bad arthritis in his hands. I don't think he could even like swing his tail. So do I think he's a threat? Probably not. But still, it's just about, you know, like setting the example. Well, it's the precedent. It's, yeah. it's also like, oh, so that one's okay, but this one's not. And what if you're wrong? Who's assessing this? Who's writing down which one is okay and which one's not? You know, you have to, it's, it's right. going to be a blanket. It, yep. That's how laws are, you know? It's not like, oh, you know, that guy's pretty nice. He murdered somebody. I think he's good. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's kind of how you have to look at it, you know? Um, but again, children. I, I do not agree with that whatsoever. I fought with a lot of other alligator professionals about this who want to have like five year olds on the back of an alligator. And I'm like, guys, a lot no. of the alligator people in Florida don't like us. <laughs> like, I'm like, no, like, again, if you're, if you're over 18, for sure, you know what I mean? But like a little kid like that, even if the gator's jaws are taped, if it decides it, if it got scared and it doesn't even try to bite, I see this a lot where they don't try to bite, they get scared and they try to run away. They're just afraid. So they try to flee. And if it tries to flee, it's moving the tail, swinging the tail, hits a kid in the head. Their skull's not fully formed and ain't gonna end well. You know, I just, there's just too many possible accidents that could happen that could be completely out of, out of your, uh, you know, your purview of what you think is going to happen. So unpredictable. And like, it's just not worth it with a child, you know, like they don't understand the risks, you know, like I just, I don't like that personally. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, no, I agree. And we actually talk about it and we're, we're like, you know, if we ever had kids, would we let our kids play with alligators? And I, I don't, I mean, obviously I don't know, but right now, well, we don't have kids and we are not even thinking about kids. I am going to say, no, I wouldn't let my five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 11 year old with big gators. Maybe big you could gators. feed like well, the smaller gators, not by hand, just, you know, throw some chow across the fence. But I just... Well, I was like 10 years old messing with gators, but they were little gators. And, and like, 
you could get hurt, and, but I wasn't going to get killed. Okay, and does it? Did you learn a healthy respect when you were ten years old touching alligators, or did? Yeah, I like, bled a lot. Cool. Well, that's the thing. I also feel like when kids are touching apex predators, it doesn't give them an appreciation for it where well, it's like a healthy respect. Like, oh, it's it's an alligator. I get to hold an alligator. And I just, I feel like alligators are like becoming so like gimmicky, you know, and it's like a prop. And I, I don't like that. And we've talked about this before, like at our sanctuary, we're not going to let people hold alligators. We're not doing the photo thing. We're not... I, I just, I, that's not what I want for us. And that's not what I want to. Well, I would say there's a ton of value in having a, uh, nope, don't want over getting too close to over here. Um, I think there's a ton of value in letting a kid be able to pet a baby alligator, even if you don't want them to hold it because you don't want them to drop it. But I think there's a, there's an immense amount of value as a kid being able to pet one. So like, I mean, this, so we, we can disagree on this and people love that. Um, but I think like there's an immense amount of value that if I am as an educator and I've done this I've brought baby gators to schools and stuff like that If I have a baby gator and I'm holding it and I'm making sure it's safe and the people are safe and I let the kid pet the tail There's a huge amount of value in that. Listen, I for years when I was in New York I was doing educational animal shows where I would bring specifically reptiles to schools let kids touch them So I understand the value in education letting kids pet the animal. I just am talking about alligators specifically like I just I don't know. There's something about it where I don't think the kid is going to pet it and be like, wow, like I really have a healthy respect for the animal. They're going to be like, this is cool. And tell their friends, I got to touch an alligator. And I, again, I just goes back to like the gimmicky thing. I think you're expecting a lot of cognition from a kid. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, that's what I am saying. But say it sparks an interest that can lead down a path. Of them wanting to buy an alligator as a pet. Or working in conservation. You don't know how it's going to go. It depends on how you present it as the educator. Yeah. I'm not trying to sound like a Karen. I, I hope you guys, like, see my point of view. Again, I, I used to do educational shows. Like, I like hands-on. No, I do, too. I'm a toucher. I love petting animals. I'm just saying when it comes to apex predators with children, I just don't. Because, yeah, it's a baby, and it's cute, but that well, is an apex predator that deserves respect. That's going to get big. Size so, class. Well, again, you know, that's why it's about size class. You know, we're not letting little children ride on the back of an adult alligator. Like, I don't think that's a good thing. I don't think that's okay. I don't think they're going to understand that. You know, why they're going to. Why is it okay for kids to pet and hold baby alligators, but not pet and hold like baby wolves or baby tigers or another apex predator? Well, that runs into the ethics of how those animals are procured so like tiger king cub petting all that kind of stuff so that runs into that now if you could avoid those issues um then sure as a baby animal that's a really cool experience for somebody do you think most of the people that want to touch alligators and stuff would do it because they just love alligators or because they want a tourist photo with an alligator most people just want the photo, but that's what sparks the interest in the first place. If I wasn't a kid who had access to those animals when I was young, we wouldn't have a sanctuary right now. Wouldn't have happened. That's the thing. Like, we are saving animals today because I had experiences as a child with these animals. And if I didn't have those, none of this would exist. I think we're on the same side, but like, we're disagreeing about this. Cause I mean, the same thing, I started volunteering at a nature center when I was, when I was 15 and I got like a lot of inspiration from that and like, that's why I wanted the enclosures a certain way and, you know, the nature trail. So, again, like, I, I get the value. I just, I don't know how I feel about alligators being used, you know, brought to schools, this, that. Well, so, it also depends, like I was just saying, like the, the Tiger King thing, like, why are they in captivity in the first place? Are you constantly breeding baby alligators to fulfill this need? Then that's a bad thing. Just like if you're breeding baby tigers to fulfill this need, that's a bad thing. They have a limited amount of time they're going to be able to be used for this. So, that creates a whole dark underbelly of that industry as it does with tiger king right but that's not the case here we get baby alligators all the time that we have to rescue out of places you know so like there is a supply oh, that's the bucket it's not me <laughs> it's TikTok. <laughs> blame it on the snake um but um yeah so barring that argument of like the where did the animal come from thing if we're just talking about the value of a child having an interaction with an animal where they get to touch it I think that's important. I think that's a very good thing if it can be done in a way that's safe and ethical. And kids know the difference between a baby alligator and an adult, just like they know a puppy from an adult dog. It's, I mean, this is instincts. They are going to be fearful of the big animal unless they're taught not to be. That's why I say it's bad for them to interact with an adult animal 
um, as a kid because they don't understand that. I guess I've just seen so many seven, six year olds on the back of a seven foot alligator with its mouth taped and they're like smiling and they just, they're not respecting that animal. Well, they're having a great time. Yeah, no, but, but they are not respecting that animal. They don't understand anything about the animal. And again, I know it's a, it's a kid. I just, something well, about it rubs me the wrong way. Well, I would say because they don't have the cognitive abilities yet to differentiate between that alligator and another one. That's why, again, I don't think that's okay. But kids absolutely know if it, what a baby is yeah you know they know the difference between a baby and an adult and so they're not going to treat an adult the way they would treat a baby yeah i mean that that's innate that's an instinctual thing within children when they they play they want to play with dolls they want to play with baby dolls not human uh, adult doll you know what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. um so that's why i think that like having them with a baby alligator in an ethically done way is okay because they're not going to be like oh i can go talk to the 12 footers can be the same they instinctually know that that's not the case you know yeah. but if you teach them it's okay to sit on the back of a uh, eight foot alligator that is taped up and that is nice they're not going to know the difference between the nice alligator and the not nice alligator right so i guess moving into um that's a whole rabbit hole moving on <laughs> know, okay yeah a little bit of a tangent 35 minutes with tiktok and it's gonna rain um, um moving on to do you think this animal should be given back to this guy and what do we do to stop this um so because again there are people out there that are flying under the radar in alligators and far worse habitat i don't know about condition i mean that alligator is not in good condition let's not physically you mean. yeah physically it's not in good condition you know um but there are alligators also in really bad condition and that guy was trying so should he get his alligator back or do we need to set an example and say no you didn't follow the law and your alligator has a lot of health issues and sorry this is a tough lesson we have to learn and well no he shouldn't get his alligator back and no one should have an alligator unless you're an educational facility right. and you have the ability to house the animal in the first place the whole oh, premise no. of alligators as pets should go away <laughs> starting to rain <laughs> Yeah. All right, we're, we're, we'll, we'll just stay here until it starts to, like, really pour. But, yeah, so... The problem is within the system itself that they allow this to happen in the first place. Right, and that's why we try to do these videos to educate people so they know the facts. They know, like, oh, wow, well, alligators, all alligators in captivity are suffering from some sort, some level of metabolic bone disease. So you should never buy an alligator as a pet. You should never, I don't even agree with the caimans as pets. And alligators out of all the crocodilians are way more susceptible to metabolic bone disease. Again, we don't know why. I've seen caimans and crocs raised in captivity that look pretty good, but still, I don't think we should be having these caiman as well, pets. I, so here, here's, we've been uh, looking into some US Fish and Wildlife rulings. And so one of their rulings they have for certain animals is that you have to have uh, 12 programs a year to justify you having this animal. 12 educational programs. I think that should be the case with all these. Right. And you should have to be able to justify that and be like, I have these animals because I do this many educational programs a year. Bringing it to the pet store on a leash is not education. No, no. Legitimate educational programs at other facilities, not just walking around the street like, you guys want to pet my snake? And maybe if you have some other animals too, so it's not like you just have one alligator and then like you think it's your mission to go around with your one alligator and teach people. Like you have to know what you're doing. You have to be some kind of educator with reptiles right. or, or something. So, so like here, we plan on having uh, school groups be able to visit. We want to be able to have field trips come out and be able to see the animals, you know? And so I think that you should have to justify having these exotic animals for educational purposes, you know? And that way it's not just... There, there should be zero pet alligators is what I'm saying. Um, if you want to have one, then you better justify it. And you better be like, oh, well, you know, I love them so much. So I'm going to use them for educational purposes. I'm going to go to 12 different schools a year, or I'm going to be able to, to create a facility where people can come and visit from schools, you know, things like that. Like there should be a justification. Why do you have this thing? Right. Yeah. I mean, and I feel like we're just going to get uh, so much hate from other people in the industry, but what else is new? Don't care. Yep. I mean, it, I again, I don't think that alligators should be pets. I don't think that... No crocodilian should be pets. Yeah. That's it. That's it. End of story. They're not pets. You know, these are animals that like... And if you just look at the motivation behind these people, especially these young boys in Florida having these crocodilians, is it for education and conservation or is it to make videos? Attention seeking. And, yeah. That, it's, it, so it, it goes like back to like the motivation of having the animal, which is also why I question 
the emotional support alligator because you're bringing it out in public like that and I, it's just very attention seeking. Well, even if it supports you emotionally, it's emotionally uh, disruptive to the animal. That gator is not happy. That is not normal or natural for him to be experiencing that, you know? Yeah. So that's not a happy situation for that alligator. It's habituated enough to, you know, be let it happen like calm, and be used to be it. Be tolerant, but like that's not what that animal wants. So let's talk about the differences between, you know, bringing the alligator. <laughs> We've got both turkeys, <laughs> both emus, both dogs. <laughs> <laughs> the three ducks over there, the goats. Um, let's talk about the difference between bringing an alligator into like, like a public space, like you know, Wally the alligator at concerts and the pet store, versus Casper and the tours you do and like the training and why or, it's voluntary and not forced. Well, so a couple of different distinctions to make there is that when we're doing the Casper tour, everything we're doing is volunteer on his part. I don't make him do anything. He comes over, I call him over, knows his name, comes over, gets a little treat, gets some photos taken of him with people. So that's an entirely voluntary experience on his part. It's not stressful for him in any way. It's crazy. Um, and if you're not familiar with these tours, I mean, you could check out some of our other videos, check out Chris's website, Crocodile Chris, but like this alligator will be on land, Chris is in the water and he just calls his name one time and the alligator makes his way at his own pace from the you know little section he's hanging out into the water and comes over and he gets a treat so it's positive reinforcement so that is a hundred percent voluntary and you know if i don't think there's ever been a time where he doesn't want to do it because he it's positive reinforcement but yeah okay well here's a comparison to make then so uh the more fair comparison is bringing an alligator to a school if you have a baby alligator and you're a licensed educating facility you are stressing your baby alligator by bringing it to a school. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. But what's the justification here? Pro con. Pro con. So the con is, yeah, the gator's not happy about that. Baby gator's not having a good time going to a school. It's not fun for him. But you are inspiring and educating children who will hopefully then learn to care about conservation and caring for these animals. The pro outweighs the con. Now, if I'm bringing my pet alligator to a pet store where I just get attention, and maybe there's 12 people there that might see it, who's really benefiting there? Is right. it is it you or are you making an effect on society? You know, right. if you bring it to a school with like 30 kids or, I mean, whenever I would do them, it would be multiple classes within a day. So we're educating hundreds of kids within one day. So it's not a fun day for the alligator, but hundreds of people are educated and inspired and hopefully care about conservation. Meanwhile, you know, maybe a dozen people at a pet store. Yeah. I mean, I really think the takeaway is just like this industry is not good and we really shouldn't be selling crocodilians. I mean, I am surprised the laws haven't changed, especially up north with all these alligators being released into the Chicago River and New York. And like, yeah, when I was living in New York, my friend was a police officer and she sent me a picture of an alligator that she found in someone's backyard. It's just the these animals should not be so easily accessible. That's really what it is. You should have to at the very least have like permits. And I know in Florida, you know, it's pretty regulated, but like in uh, Pennsylvania, it is not. So another point that I said earlier on on my channel that I wanted to say, too, is imagine you're the alligator because that's what everybody keeps on saying. Well, he only knows his dad. That's the only home he's ever known. He should go back to It's all he's ever known okay he also has horrible physical disfigurement because of that care so put yourself in his shoes imagine that your mouth couldn't open up enough to eat and that you could only eat through a straw because of how your parents raised you would you want to go back to that how would you feel about those people if you understood that now obviously the alligator doesn't understand or hold the guy at full he doesn't get it but still like it put yourself in the animal's shoes. Imagine your spine is so disfigured you can barely walk correctly. Well, let's be careful because now there's articles saying his spine isn't deformed, even if his spine isn't deformed. There's like 10 other things that are 100% yeah. obvious. So I saw some things that said that, but either way, the jaw thing. So yeah, the eyes. The eyes. He's he's practically blind. Or the jaw like this. Like yeah. The like, fact that he can't open his mouth. The arthritis on his toes, on his, like, morbidly obese. That so, alligator is probably one of the fattest alligators I've ever seen. So imagine you. You can barely see. You can only eat through a straw. Um, your skull is so disfigured that you could be, if... if <laughs> If this was dug up as a fossil 
and we didn't know where it came from. And I was, I was a paleontologist. I would think it's a different species. It looks so drastically different from a normal alligator that you would think it was a different species if you found the fossil of it. So imagine that's you and that it was all preventable. Yeah. How would you feel? Well, so what automatically comes to mind, I follow this dog rescue and they do great work, but there was recently a dog and uh, it was like an older dog, like 12 or something. And the people have never done this dog's teeth, never took it for a dental, for a teeth cleaning. And it had such bad dental disease, the jaw broke. And everybody was outraged as they should be because that's horrific and that's disgusting. But like, then with this alligator, people are looking at this alligator with its jaw like like this, and they're like, he needs to go home. Yeah, how do you not where feel the do same you, way? Right, where you do know? you draw the line? I don't well, know if it's because people just don't care about alligators or because people aren't educated enough to to see or, and know about it. I well, really, I don't know. Look what we do with people. If a child is taken by protective services because it is, uh, you know, lacking, in, I'm trying to say this in the most sensitive way I can and not offend anybody, but... If it's if the child's only been eating chicken nuggets for 10 years and it has his, his jaw is all deformed, you know, like, that is justified. Like, Even if you're doing your best, you know, if your kid's eating nothing but chicken nuggets, like... You have to have provide proper care, right. you know? Okay, but then... There is not enough known about proper care, even in the best AZA facilities, to be able to avoid MBD. And that goes back Ergo, to varying degrees. They shouldn't be allowed to be owned as pets. Yeah, but there it also go. goes back to varying degrees, because I have seen alligators in captivity that, that look a lot right. better. Right, right. And again, pros versus cons. Right. Captive animals. Um, I mean, that's a whole different argument, you know, pro, con of zoos, whatever. But the point being that, like, there is no pro as a pet. That's what we're trying to get at. You know, the animal's going to suffer all these different issues and ailments. And what is the pro? Oh, I get to keep it because I like it. But he's suffering. Yeah, but I like it. Right. That's not okay. So a lot of people ask, what's going to happen to this alligator now? Um, is it going to be able to heal from these ailments? No, it will not be able to heal. You're not going to be able to fix those. Those mm -hmm. are solidified within the bone of the animal. You can't fix it. It can lose weight. Yeah, I could lose weight. That could and I don't better. know, obviously, I'm just looking at the photos. I wonder if it's just so obese that the nictating membranes are over. I don't know if it's mine, if the eyes. nictating membrane. It needs to see an ophthalmologist. Maybe they can fix the eyes. I don't know. Maybe they can. Yeah, they said cataracts. Those are not cataracts. No, that not. is That is like excess fat or something. So maybe that could be fixed. There's also a chance that animal might be euthanized. It was technically illegally owned and has health issues. So, and again, the people calling the shots don't necessarily know about animals I, in the upper government so i right well i think with the amount of media attention they're not going to euthanize it there's right. going to be too much outrage but if there was not media attention on this what do state officials usually do euthanize right they don't care they have zero sympathy um we know people who have done great care of animals gone outside of the protocols for what the requirements were for the permit and those greatly cared for animals are just euthanized they don't for politics because just over the politics they, they don't weren't care. on display or they weren't being used enough like perfectly healthy well cared for for years right. and they're like nope you didn't meet this criteria shoot them yeah. it's horrible so yeah. that's what they would probably do in this situation if it didn't have as much media attention as it does and again that's why it's so important to follow the the laws and the laws are always changing and it is a privilege to be able to have these animals and there's a lot of loopholes and a lot of paperwork and a lot of things that you have to deal with. And like when you sign up to have an animal, that's what happens. And I understand he bought it 30 plus years ago and the laws were probably way more lax. He probably didn't even get like an import permit or permission, he probably just drove it or shipped it. But now as things change, we kind of have to evolve with it. Animal care is always changing. Look at animal care 15 years ago compared to now yeah yeah definitely 15 years ago when i had my first bearded dragon it was like standard to put them on like the walnut chips and now if anyone sees you putting them on walnut chips you're going to be canceled <laughs> so it, it's always changing and you know it's it's just our responsibility to kind of evolve with the laws mm -hmm. so um, do we think he's going to get this animal back i don't think so i don't think so either yeah. i don't think even with all the petitions and everything i don't think he's going to get this animal back i think that's a great enclosure maybe if he wants to put like an asian water monitor or something in it that would be great for like a big lizard it's not ideal for an alligator 
you know, and I don't think you should get another one either. Yeah, definitely that, yeah. So I just wanna say again, like we've tried to make it clear, this guy doesn't deserve any hate. He's not a malicious person. He wasn't intentionally trying to abuse this animal. Uh, so please like don't go on his social media and just be mean to him. We're not even gonna, I don't even know his name honestly, but somebody did tag him and I'm like, oh my God, everyone's gonna go yeah. harass him now. Yeah. You don't harass the guy. Comment. I I should. Yeah, please please don't harass him. I mean, again, we just we're just trying we don't even want to direct this at this gentleman. It's just super viral right now and we keep getting tagged in it. We kind of just want to talk about this like as an overall all alligators in captivity do have some varying level of metabolic bone disease and we would really like to see this industry like I don't know, just stop selling baby alligators at expos. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, to recap, no crocodilian should be kept as a pet. That's a pet. That's my firm stance right there. They should not be kept as pets by anyone, anywhere. Um, they should only be kept by an educational oriented facility, research, things like that. Uh, justified reason for having it, not because I like it and I want it. You know. Have you ever seen the pet tubers that like? react to uh enclosures like send me your hamster's enclosure and your bird's enclosure and then they like rate it well they do that <laughs> it would be so interesting to be like send me your pet alligator enclosure so we can give you our honest feedback i'm mm. afraid of what we would see honestly it's yeah. probably like a tank or like a kiddie pool but yeah i wonder if uh if we should open that i don't up. want no i don't want to do that <laughs> no i don't want to do like that <laughs> Well, maybe we could help some alligators. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. What should people do right now if they have an alligator and they're like, oh man, my alligator has metabolic bone disease and I'm not taking great care of it. What can they do? Uh, a lot of alligator sanctuaries are full. A lot of private owners are full. Dumping them is illegal and will kill the animal. So what do they do? Yeah. Um, it, uh, there is no perfect solution, unfortunately. You try to find a licensed facility that is doing a good job. They can take them in. Um, there is zoos don't want your MBD alligator. I promise you that right now because everyone seems to think I'll just give it to a zoo. They do not want your metabolic bone disease all alligator. I promise you. Well, let's just take a second too. just say in Florida because Florida does overall a pretty good job on their permits. Florida does have a four feet and under permit where you can get a four a permit for a under four foot crocodilian to be able to keep in your normal house, apartment, whatever. Florida needs to get rid of that. That is not okay. That is perpetuating this issue. It is helping create this problem and allowing people to have four foot pet alligators that then when it gets over four feet, uh, what do I do with it? It's not okay. Those. I don't think it's Florida that's the problem. Well, no, I'm just saying because we live in Florida, that, right. that does exist here. No, it definitely so I, does. I, I, why, that's why I wanted to point well, it out. Well, luckily in Florida, it's pretty easy to find like another facility to take it, but I definitely think that's the case for other states like up north. Yeah, yeah. So there's no... Easy but I answer. do think that's insane that they let you keep like a three foot Cuban crocodile like in your apartment. Yeah, that's not okay. That's not a good thing that animals not living a good life like that. No, it's not. All right. Well, we are uh, getting rained on, so I guess we should uh, wrap this up. But we hope you guys learned something today. Enjoyed this video. Uh, let us know what you think about alligators in captivity. If you think this guy should get his alligator back. What we can do to prevent this. Yeah. What just, do you think about kids interacting with baby alligators? All these kind of things. Yeah, let us know what you think in the comments, guys. And, uh, you know, as always, like, share, comment, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. And we'll see you all next time.